Welcome back, everybody. It is Redness Day here on the 7th of April. And, uh, of course, on Redness Day, we have Red We Met with us. So, uh, everyone, welcome back. It's uh, Mob Vlog. Hey, Red, how's it going today? It's going good. 83 degrees. <laughs> you can't ask for much more than that, right? I sure can't. Perfect weather out today. Just before we went on, Red and I were doing our mic check, and he was talking about, you know, what to do if the Jehovah Witness comes to your door. And uh, and I was... T- <laughs> How to get rid of him. How to get rid of him. Yeah, well, the other day... Jehovah's Witness came to my door and knocked. I said, come on in. He walked in. I said, what can I do for you? And he said, I don't know. I never got this far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, so we have a bit of a subject on our hands today that uh, we haven't talked much about. And, and I have some clips. We have some clips from uh, a little bit of Frank. Uh, we have a little bit of... Frank talking about Vince Solano, which you guys are going to hear me butcher that name later on when we play that clip. Adam the Butcher back at it. But uh, hey guys, it is uh, it is cool to be here today. Uh, I just want to say welcome to uh, Tedford Von Patriot to Iron. Hello friends, thank you very much for hi Brett. Uh, How you doing? <laughs> for throwing down a bit. Um, Scott H. Uh, All of you guys, uh, Robert Niesler, Jay Murphy, Mike Alexander, John Allen, Husey67. I'm starting to get to know you guys by name. Ian Frost, Chain Weaver, uh, it's it's, uh, Dan Kirchner. You guys are all here today. And Phil Hadaway. Hey, man, thanks for joining and becoming a member. Phil just became a member. Phil, you just unlocked some special footage that you can see uh, on the channel, including... Uh, Frank Culotta renewing marriage vows inside Tony Spilatro's house video. Okay. That's what's happening. So, and I hear Allie laughing downstairs. Something's going on. I'm not sure. So, but Hey, thanks to the, some Jehovah's witnesses for uh, throwing down, uh, talk smack. Now that we're in the room punks, <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Whoever does, you're hilarious. I'm sorry. You make me laugh. Anyway, guys, it is good to see you today. As everybody's piling in, I'm going to start to play a little bit of this footage. Like I say, we have some Frank Colada coming up on here. And uh, yeah, Duke Dunhurst, Brett, what's going on? Phil Hadaway, good to be here uh, and to see you guys as well on this uh, this fantastic Redness Day, which is beautiful here in Vegas. Red says it's beautiful. So. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, to get into this, but first, before we do, I have to tell you guys, I'm excited, all right? Excited, because earlier today, literally right before uh, this live feed, uh, I interviewed Elaine Smith. I got her book the other day, uh, read it cover to cover, uh, all about Ken Eto. I know there's a big thing about Ito Eto. Adam the Butcher has figured it out once again. Uh, it's Eto. So the, um, and, and that's coming from Ken Eto's mouth to her ears, then from her mouth to my ears. So, and pretty soon to your ears, because I'm going to edit this interview up and post it, hopefully 2 PM this Saturday, this upcoming Saturday. So, uh, hopefully that'll, uh, that'll be up and going. And, uh, and she even said at the end of the interview that she'd be willing to, to do a live and talk about some of the things that she, uh, she went through, including, including after 9-11, she was the, uh, in, she went and investigated all the terrorists and tracked all the money and the funding for the, uh, for where those terrorists got it from. And then also a cocaine distribution for, uh, for a, um, six stock brokers that were connected to the Genovese family and were represented by Rudy Giuliani. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that's really cool. But we didn't get into any of that. She's going to come back and do that again uh, another time. So I'm excited about the interview that we did do. So anyway. Um, I'm to see it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be very, very good. And some of the stuff, like I say, you guys hadn't, uh, haven't heard yet. So anyway, if you're just coming in, smash the like button. Get in here. Jay Murphy's here. Jay Murphy's here. 
<laughs> Remember, the thumbs, the thumbs. <laughs> Hit the like button, guys. And uh, let's get a little bit of uh, some video going. So, uh, so Red, we're going to talk about the Rush Street crew, the North Side, the whole deal that was controlled by uh, Vince Solano. Well, actually, the lineage of that goes back to Jimmy Allegretti. And then it went to uh, uh, Caesar DeVarco, Joseph DeVarco. And uh, we called him Caesar. But, you know, as I look, as I look at, it was kind of, that was kind of a very big income at one time. These guys destroyed it. <laughs> it started falling apart. Well, I hear a big part of it, though, was the Rush Street area, all the bars, you know, oh, yeah. all of these faces. I don't know if you guys noticed the Rush Street behind me. Faces was owned by Grand and Anton. That was uh, Joey Lombardo's uh, cousin that owned that. Okay. I think he was on the license. Uh, Rittenbacher was on the license. So they had the muscle on all these joints out there in, uh, in Rush Street? Yeah. Well, it started going downhill, declining, so Grand and Ogden kind of moved in. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, we're during, my era. during my era. Oh, okay. During your era. Now, uh, Frank was asked about the uh, about Vince uh, Solano. Solano. I know Solano, all right. I'm getting, but the, the problem is, is I'm about to play this clip, and in the clip, I read a question to Frank, and this is back in April. This is a year ago, and you're and reading it, and you're just reading the script. <laughs> I'm just, I'm butchering the hell out of it. I have no idea who I'm even talking about in the clip. Okay, so, so I'm sorry, butchered this, and I have to hear it, and then that throws me off from saying Solano. So whatever the hell I said, it's really bad. But anyway. We're going to watch that clip. This is somebody asking Frank about uh, the North Side and if he knew anyone. So we're going to go ahead right now and uh, enroll that for you. Do one on Vince Solono, North Side boss. I know who he was. He was a big guy. I never dealt with him. Never dealt with him. He's in that picture that they show all the time. Uh, he was a big time boss, but I never had no run-ins with him. I knew who he was. Sean Pender wants to know, Hey, Frank, did you ever have to deal with anyone from the Chicago Heights crew? Thanks. No, I never dealt with the Southside crew of Chicago Heights. They call it Chinatown out that way. Uh, they had their crew, their part, and we had our part. It was like broken up into four sections. Chinatown guys, they were a pretty vicious crew. Pretty vicious, although they were vicious in all the crews. This guy, Philly Fiore, who I used to steal with, we were, I believe it was Damon Avenue. There was a card room there. You know, we hung in card rooms. So we had to meet this guy by the name of Hunk. He was in charge of the Rush Street area. He was a gangster, a made guy. So we went into the card room. And who was at the table was Jasper Campisi, Hunk, and another guy. Jasper sees me. You knew my father from the old days. And he jumps up, Frankie, Frankie, what are you doing here? I said, well, Philly come to see, Hunk. So we talked a little bit, he introduced me to Hunk. So Hunk looked at Philly and he said, I got a card game going here, so come back a little later, I'll give you the money. He said, about how long? Hunk said, about an hour. So Philly said, all right, Hunk, thank you. So Philly was borrowing money from Hunk on juice. All right, so we leave. An hour and a half later, we come back. We had a habit of always parking our car a block away if we were going to spots and walk. So as we're walking up, I see detectives coming out of the car room. Well, it's too late to turn around. They spot us. The guy that spots us, his name was William Anhard, who later became a, a corrupt cop that went to jail and got 15 years. And he became a big boss with the CIU in Chicago. So he calls us. Where are you going? So we were going to play cards, Philly says. He said, well, you can't go in there. And we look. And there's a guy covered. They got a guy covered. There's only one guy there. I don't see 
Jasper and I don't see the other guy. And he said, well, I come to see Hunk. For what? He said, was going to borrow me some money? He said, well, he don't look like he can borrow you money now. Who was there with him? He said to me, I, I don't, there was nobody. He was just sitting there. Okay, they let us go. Now, for some way or another, I found out later that Hunk was related to Ann Hart, the cop. That goes to show you in Chicago, connections all over. From my understanding, I found out that, of course, Jasper killed Hunk. What did he kill Hunk for? I don't know. They could have had an argument in the game, guards. It could have been they set up Hunk to kill him there. I know quite a few people that have killed at guard games. They thought they were there to play cards. Somebody come in the door, whack them, walk out. It's a good place to set you up. Anyway, that's the best I could tell you on that, on that story. So I let that roll a little longer there because of the whole Hanhart and Hunk connection that they're the fam that they were related somehow, and uh, it, it seems like everything went round and round in uh, Chicago. The connections. It did. Everybody was married somebody, or there was somebody. There was some connection between. There was more trust in family than there was in strangers. So, uh, and that was even, you know, talked a lot, which you guys will hear in the upcoming uh, interview, even with uh, about Ken, uh, Ken Eto, because uh, he didn't trust the police either uh, in Chicago. There were too many that, you know, were, were, you know, on the take. Oh, they put the arm on the outfit, guys. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's something. So that's really something. Hey, guys, if you're just coming in here, be sure to hit this uh, smash uh, the like button there. Calzone83. Yeah, Jasper Campisi. He was a uh, he was. Uh, I got a quote coming up here from Frank. I'm going to play in a little while. Uh, of, like, like I said, when we talk about uh, Ken here in a, in a moment, because he was all part of that North Side uh, crew and ran the uh, the Bolito, I believe it was called, which was the Filipino numbers game that that they they had it's like the lottery system but they were cutting out the the government basically so anyway i'll play that uh, that clip but red when you lived there back in your day what was rush street like rush street was uh, mr kelly's it was everything i mean rush street was the night spot i mean all the all the strip joints um uh, it was it was the place to go to, to, to go out there. As a matter of fact, some of my memorable experiences were I was down there with uh, somebody, I forget who, but we used to go down there and drink. And uh, I ran across Jay McMullen. And Jay McMullen was a writer for the Sun Times. He, he wrote for the Sun Times. And he said, Can you believe this? My wife is going to run for mayor. And I said, McMullen, you know, I didn't see it. Turned out that he was Jane Burns' husband, and he later became her campaign manager. He, had, every, we all thought it was a joke. Everybody was laughing. Yeah, yeah. I think what, you you talked about that in the video. Who's red when Matt? We'll put a little sticker right up here if you guys want to watch it. Um, it. It's it's interesting that whole deal about how she ran and ended up winning and. Um, yeah, but we'll put a flag up there. Go on, Red. At any rate, uh, he quit his job at the Sun Times. He became her campaign manager eventually, and our manager afterwards. But there was a, you saw celebrities walking down the street. I mean, all the time there were celebrities and good acts. I mean, good people played there. A lot of entertainment. That was it. Entertainment was there. What about the illegal activities, prostitution, drugs, gambling? That was all there. Every bit of it. There was a place, I've had disputes with different people about it, just like Habitashery. <laughs> there was a place called, uh, uh, Joe Arnold owned it, and Caesar were partners in it. And it was called, to me at the time, we it was called Odds and Ends. And um, it was a shirt store where they, they sold shirts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was actually a place where they just came in. People came in from suburbs everywhere to pay street tax or 
they, or whatever they were doing. You know, if they wanted to drop off an envelope, they came in there. So the FBI had a uh, surveillance set up. And one time when I was coming in for pictures to look at different pictures, I saw a lot of different people that I knew. And I said, I didn't know they were part of the Rush Tree crew. <laughs> it was different. But well, there, uh, anything you wanted, you got on Rush Street. And Rush Street had a, a real um, a knack for if they if they saw a, a B-girl, they had all B-girl joints down there, a bunch of them. But they had a real knack if that was going bust on Rush Street, they would close the B-girl joint and they'd put in a gay bar. Uh -huh. Because that was what they did. I never knew that. You know, I never went down and saw them. I didn't know they were gay bars. Uh, real, real quickly, uh, Bruce City Calzone. You're right. It's not Filipino. It is. I knew I said it incorrectly. It's Puerto Rican. The Puerto Rican numbers game. Below. I was gonna say it's Puerto Rican. I, I was. That's what I was trying to ask. I was trying to. I was like, I, I looked at you like, did I get that right? I think I said something wrong. <laughs> no, it was. It was Puerto Rican. Okay, so yeah, they, Bolido. It was a, Bolido. Uh, yeah, Bolito, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, kind of like state the state line uh, it, it road back in Calumet City back in the day. State line, there was nothing but whiskey, a go go, right. and go go girl, and this and that, and that was yeah. So uh, and there was others at the end of the street. I mean, they added a lot of places on there. Let Let me ask you guys. Put yes in the in the comments if you guys you want to you want to go through some pictures of uh, places out there on a uh, on Rush Street, or do you guys want? something different right now because i pulled up some pictures i, I thought they were kind of fascinating so if i just get a couple of yeses i'll frank I'll, pano uh, used to own the six east on 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 six east chestnut mm -hmm. there are a lot of different places on the side streets of rush street all those little side streets okay and they had strippers they had strippers and they had uh, b-girls it was known for the b-girl places as a matter of fact, that's where I first started out tending bar. Was on Rush Street. There we go. So, yes. uh, yeah, that's faces back in the background. Looks like uh, Billy's over here. Billy's. Gino's. Gino's. Mm -hmm. And this is I some recognize uh, all of them. Cantonese Chinese cuisine right here. Uh, yeah. So let me let's pop through this and see what we. Uh, what we have there's another one. Oh, that's a good one. faces yeah bourbon street in the background that's how i remember it right there yeah yeah it was black and had this and inside if you, it was a private club you had to have a you had to be a member have a membership card to get in there wow what did that cost you i never bought one I, at the time they were like uh five hundred dollars just to become a member but uh I had a, a friend that was a member, and he loaned me his club card. Mm -hmm. And it has your picture on it and everything. And it's, it's like before they went into the driver's licenses that were sealed. That's how, you know, it was a card like that. Like they do, you know, they had paper driver's licenses. So the, the guy at the door, the doorman, looked at it, and he kept the card. He kept the card because it wasn't me. It wasn't him. It was mm -hmm. me. And so I just said, okay, no trouble. And I just left. You know, I didn't, I didn't start anything. So, um, but even then, if you remember, it was like they had security there at the door. And it was well known that everybody that went in there, if you went in, it was like the <laughs> the known place. If, if you couldn't get lucky there, you couldn't get lucky anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the place of places to go when uh, you wanted a night out. Oh, yeah. Caesar. Caesar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That ended up in that folder. Sorry about that. Let me just move through this. Moulin Rouge. Uh, I was never there. I saw it, but I was never in it. Exotic go go dancers. Right oh, here. Yeah. Exotic go go dancers. All the way along the street. Uh huh. That was all through the 70s. There's, there's uh, faces again. There, that's the shot that I was telling you about that I. I saw Ados. Ados down here. Yeah, yeah. everybody now, knew Ados. These were all these were all just uh, um, uh, uh, bars, nightclubs, right? Oh yeah. 
Okay. And the parking was really, you know, it was high priced. High priced because you couldn't park on the street. You didn't have a parking lot. Did, uh, you said that a lot of entertainment played there. Um, yes, a lot of good live entertainment. Buddy all- Rich played there. Buddy Rich played there through the 60s, uh, late nice. 60s, early 70s. Uh, I think Bette Midler played there. There's a lot of people that played there that were, you know, they were up and coming. Richard Pryor played there. Um. <laughs> Come on. Nobody's laughing, really? Where the customer comes Red, first. Red actually got this joke. Yes, I did. <laughs> and then I looked at the matchbook. I said, ah, creative. <laughs> uh, I'll see you at the corner lounge. Here you go. Sunday dinner. Somebody just asked, what what was a meal back then, right? What did a meal cost? Let me see. That. Yeah, Sunday dinner. 65 cents. Look at that. 65 cents but for Sunday dinner. But there was Sunday a major catch today. It was 65 cents, but there was a cover charge at the door. What was the cover charge? 15 bucks. Oh, gosh. So you got your fresh shrimp cocktail, your glass of wine, your juice frappe, your anchovy, I don't know what that is, canopy? Can't. And, and then your blue points on a half a shell and your assorted hors d'oeuvres. I mean, uh, hors d'oeuvres. Hors but all those places were known as clip joints. That's right. what we call them, clip joints. Clip joints. That meant that they were just uh, out to uh, take you? It was like Las Vegas. They're there to take your money. Hey, Red, when I was growing up, there yeah. were so many of these signs in Calumet City, I thought this was like the South Side flag or something. It's it, no, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Well, old style, you put up signs for free, and then you'd have old style beer in there. Right. Uh, the Galaxy Nightclub. There you go. It's a bunch of bunch of places, shenanigans. Shenanigans. Tell- I was there. Shenanigans was a nice place. I liked it. It's on division. On division. So wh- all these all these famous people who played there. What about the ink blots, Red? Oh, the ink spots. Sorry, the ink spots. They never played there. They played <laughs> out on on Madison Street. That was Bulahana's family. Okay. But they were connected with Rush Street. But they had all these hot dog stands, Italian beef stands, whatever. They were all out on Chicago Avenue in the black neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. I got a funny story to tell you about that one. Okay. Uh, I was out there with Chris Bullahannis. And uh, Chris was born like in 1943. And I was born like 49. So Chris and I got along real well. His dad was like Sam Stefano. He was crazy. But anyway, when we were out there, it was... Uh, <laughs> these guys came to the, the door and they had all their instruments. They're all black guys. It was a black club. And so uh, they were coming in and Chris told them, he said he was watching the door. He was dormant for the night for his dad. And uh, he said, you know, use the back door. And he, the guy turned around and says, you don't understand. We're the ink spots. And he says, I don't care if you're, if who you are. He said, uh, You'll be the red spots on the sidewalk if you don't go around the back way. <laughs> so, it was kind of different. <laughs> wow. So um, so let's take a look here at another f- couple of photos. The candy store. That yes. looks like a fun place. A good friend of mine worked there, uh, Doris. Doris Fisher. Peanuts' his wife. Paul Peanuts' Peanuts wife worked there. Peanuts Pansco? Yes. She was a stripper there at, at the candy store. Huh. So, and, and and he knew about that and was okay with it. He was okay with anything. Okay. <laughs> he, used to, he used to jokingly call her a tramp. My oh, my wife, gosh. You know, and she laughed, and they, they were in love. They just got along. Wow, okay. All right, stranger things could have happened. Barbara Streisand. Barbara That's Barbara Streisand. That is a young... Barbara Streisand. That was from the 60s. Yeah, young Barbara Streisand right there. Jeez. But this was the control that the outfit had because Mm -hmm. if you didn't play that place or one of those places, even the Four Seasons play there, but if you didn't play one of their places in Chicago, it was on their tour. So they booked them. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you didn't play this place, you weren't playing someplace else. Sure. The Happy Medium. That was a nice place, too. The Happy Medium. Did, did I ever tell you about the about the midget psychic who broke out of jail? No. Oh, there was a small medium at large. <laughs> so, when, so are happy, to, when are you going to go back to stand-up comedy? I, I'm just saying the Happy Medium made me think about that. So, so rush up, Tony oh, yeah. Seller, Pancake House. Um, okay. That I'm place sorry. was up 24 hours, the Pancake House. Looks like it would have been a hoot. Oh, it was. Oh, there, there we go. There's Ken Edo. Ken Edo. So, Ken Edo. All right, guys. For those of you who are just coming into the channel, smash the like button, number one. Hit the prescribe button. Click the bell so you get notified. Don't forget to do that. The bell's important, and so is this, uh, the like button. And and by the way, you guys are making it all happen because the last live that Red uh, and, and I did was uh, was fantastic, and it really got out there because you guys are pushing the button a lot. So thank you for that, and uh, thanks to all the new people who are uh, subscribing. By the way, Red's channel... Uh, I'll throw a little little card up in the corner over there if you guys want to check it out. Uh, Red has more stories on his channel as well, so don't don't uh, don't forget to do that. Red, you just got over a thousand people too, man. <laughs> You're like I was typing away with answers. I'll tell you what, there a lot of a lot of comments, a lot of nice people said things. Uh, it was great, really great. I never had that activity before, and even somebody asked me. They said, "How many uh, subs did you have?" And I didn't understand what subs meant. How many subs did you have before you went on with Adam? And I said, "Subs," and I put a question mark. Two minutes later, the guy says, "Subscribers," and I said, "I don't know, maybe four hundred, something like that." I never looked, and I said, uh, "It just wasn't." And then all of a sudden, it's, it's blossomed so good since Adam exposed me to it. Well, as the tide rises, all boats go up. So there's nothing wrong with you guys having some more content to listen to whenever. Well, they, must uh, you like, have... they must like the stories because they keep coming back. They're watching well, every one of them. But of course. So let's do this. We got 130 people here. Hit the like button. I'm going to roll a little footage. And this is uh, way back in, I want to say this was around May of last year. So almost a year ago. Uh, somebody asked about uh, Ken Edo, and I think that somebody's actually watching right now, too. So uh, so here, let's roll this, and you guys can see what uh, Frank had to say about uh, old Ken. Next one. Josh Meza, or Meza. What about Tokyo Joe? Oh, Joe to Jeff. Joe to Jeff. He had a fucking hard head, that guy, huh? Bullets bounced off his head. They probably used half loads like I did when I shot that listener. Uh, Jasper Campisi. I know the Jasper. I didn't know his partner. Jasper goes back to my father, Jasper. Oh, this guy was a greaseball. I'm talking about typical, old-fashioned greaseball. When you looked at him, he could beat you to death with his eyes, flapping him. This guy was dangerous. I got along with this guy. He was an older man. You know why I got along with him? Because my father, he knew my father. He treated me like his son, this Jasper. Uh, Jody Chap. Well, you know, they shot this guy in the back of the head. He shoot the guy in the back of the head. This close range, you put the gun in You got to think he's going to die. But that little bullet hit the skull and floated around his head. You know, what maybe went out, I don't know. But he left. He got out and run. They should have chased him down. They should have used the higher velocity of a gun. They fucked up. They got to get killed. They weren't going to roll. Neither one of these guys would have never rolled. Good kid. Stand-up guy just like his old man. Even if they got busted. Never rolled. I agree. He's solid. A fucking Marine. He's okay. He always was. They don't want to take a chance. Rio, what do you think? Alpha don't want to take a chance. Look. 
Why take a chance? And that's when he died. There you have it. So, uh, there you have it. Now, John Gattuso. John Gattuso was I a... Knew John. I knew Johnny. Uh-huh. Johnny was a deputy sheriff, but he also collected... He's playing both sides of the fence. And he collected from a lot of different people. A lot of different people. Uh, he also had a badge. Yeah, he was a deputy sheriff. Uh-huh. Deputy, Cook County Sh- deputy sheriff. He was a deputy sheriff. It wasn't like he was out pulling people over and whacking them or, or doing. No, contact. he was on the job, but he never really went to work. I mean, it wasn't like he had a schedule where he had to be there. He just had the badge. There were a lot of guys that had badges that were deputy sheriffs that worked as bailiffs and stuff like that. They never even showed up in the courtroom, but they had the badge. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting because you know there when you talk about even dirty cops like you had a hand heart right which is again that, that's why I left that in the first clip uh, that barred about hand heart because he uh, who was it that investigated the um, the Eto at first or he was afraid about the investigation was hand heart I think the first one yeah when when he was uh, when he was uh, shot. Wasn't he one of the first cops that was on the scene? Maybe yes. I'm mistaken that. I, no, I no, no, I think you are mistaken because the FBI was on the scene. Okay. So, Renee P., uh, glad that uh, you got uh, Red's book and uh, Frank's cookbook becoming Saturday. And then once you have Frank's cookbook, you'll be able to uh, open it up, make some fantastic recipes. Uh, thank so- you, Renee, for the nice comments. Yeah, thank you, Renee, for uh, for for joining in. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so let's let let me look a little here. You guys are all throwing questions, and I've seen a few. So let me um, let me put them up here. Oh, by the way, uh, at hello friends, uh, thanks. I'm sure that Red appreciates that. I certainly do. Yes. So uh, Dave Fox, Ken must have had a thick skull. Actually, it was the angle. I just heard this. It just this. went in the skin. It didn't come out. It, it, yeah. it, it rolled around the, the skull. They it even said the skin. Yeah, they even said there was enough velocity to puncture the uh, the the skull. Had had he just pointed an inch or two to the to the left, and uh, it, it would have it would have killed him. So well, I, don't, how, I don't think he was standing still at the time. He was in the car. He probably leaned over, moved around, or did something. Well, how lucky, though. Once, twice, no, three times. How do you get shot in the head three times and not, you know, not not die? And how do you screw somebody? it up so bad that you leave the person who's playing possum there and you leave him mm-hmm. and he survives? Frank Cast, uh, Castellano had the same thing happen, Ralph Conte. I, I didn't know that. Uh, that's pretty interesting. But again, not, I don't know a lot about uh, New York, so I, I barely know anything about Chicago. To be quite honest, <laughs> quite honest, it's funny, but it's true. You're a so, Vegas. I mean, <laughs> look, look, as as much stuff there is in Chicago, as many th- it's you couldn't you could spend your life researching it. Let's just put it that way, right? So. Lions, Cicero and Lions had bars. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, right. There was Cicero, Berwin, and Lions, and there was uh, Michael's Magic Touch out there. There was that was probably most uh, actually uh, uh, the guy involved with that was uh, uh, Vic Spalacho was involved in that one, mm-hmm. but somebody else was too, and they had a lot. Actually, Bulahanis had a place out there. George Bulahanis, not. Uh, Chris's brother, but the Lions had the strip going all the way on Ogden Avenue. It was right after Magnum Chateau was torn down and everything else. Now, who exactly was it, Chris Bulahantis? Chris was, uh, I don't know, he's a hustler that just, his father uh, taught him to live the way he lived. He was, his father was a bank robber, his father was connected and I know as a younger man, he told me, he said, you got to get connected with a guy. you got to get a guy that's going to represent you. And I looked at it and said, eh, I don't think so. Because <laughs> you know, I saw his light. And he was always, 
uh, he went from everything. He went from prostitution to bookmaking. You name it. He was uh, he was right. He was there. Did you ever have any dealings in Hammond, Indiana? No. Okay. I just I, the more the more I look in and, and research things, and, and I know the mob was had they had their hands in, in Hammond everywhere, even down south toward Peoria, and even as far south as East St. Louis. Well, not only yeah, as far as East St. Louis, East St. Louis was kind of black, and they kind of ran that area. But uh, also in, um, I'm thinking about Peoria. I'm thinking about another town down there. As you go down, uh, Kankakee, Kankakee, Illinois. Right. Uh, they had a lot of action going in Kankakee. Hmm. Yeah, Kankakee's. Jimmy a... Couture was involved in that. Hmm. In what way? At chop shops. Back in the chop shop days. Chop shop wars. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, before they had the wars, they had the profits. And as soon as the money came and there was so much money in it, then they had the wars. <laughs> Yeah. Outfit Boss is asking, was Rush Street part of China, the Chinatown crew? Uh, on and off. On and off. At one part, at the later part, it was. Uh, way back in the beginning, it wasn't. It was not. It so was Rush not Street they were their own crew. They had their own crew, and it was uh, part of, uh, it goes back to Jimmy the Monk, Alec Reddy. It goes back to people like that that were brought in by Capone way, way mm -hmm. back. Remember, that's on the south side a little bit. You know, it's on near north, but it's it's close to the south side. Sure. As far south as you can almost well, go without north. leaving near Chicago. North, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Bruce City, my guess is Slot Machines from Phil Hadaway. Bruce City uh, asked... I don't know about Chicago. The underboss of Milwaukee co owned a business with them in Louisiana. You guys, you That's know anything true. about Louisiana? That's true. Um, yeah. So let me. Little Caesar was a low key guy. What do you no, know about Little Caesar? Not very much. Uh, he was very low key, easy going. Uh, but he could order a hit like that. And they said he was a prolific hit man when, when he was younger. Mm -hmm. But he was an old timer when I met him. I was a you know, young pup. Okay. What crew also, was Chuck Nicoletti also, on? When he was arrested, he, the, I think his biggest claim for fame to the public now mm -hmm. was that um, the IRS, CID, came to his home and they searched the home and they found the uh, Last Supper picture in his vent, and that's when it came out. That was in '78, I believe. Wow, yeah, that's uh, and boy, did he get in trouble for that. He was always getting in trouble and died a terrible death. Adam, Adam, what they did to him was uh, they sent him out to Terminal Island, California, and he was supposed to, pardon me, Terminal Island. Yes, a prison in California, Southern California. Is it on an island? I don't know. It's never there. <laughs> I'm just asking. I just because I think California Island. I think Alcatraz, and that's why I just wanted to make sure. You I don't know a terminal. I, I was never there at Terminal Island, okay. but they had called him before some um, uh, Senate committee hearings, and uh, instead of flying him in like they did Ken Ito, I mean or Edo, excuse me. <laughs> uh, they put him on a war wagon and that place would stop at every county jail along the way going to Washington, D.C. Well, he was complaining of chest pains and they had the windows open, no air conditioning on in that place. And they were going across the desert and everything. He got to D.C. and he died in a D.C. jail. Oh, they geez. never got him any medical help. The family sued and they settled out of court to get several million dollars. Little Caesar. Yes. Wow. He's only about five foot high. All oh. them guys were short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what crew was Chuck Nicoletti from or on or part of? You know, I'm really not sure because he was with Giancana at one time. So I don't know what happened after he left 
or, mm-hmm. you know, Jim kind of went to Mexico. So I don't know who actually he went with. Probably okay. 26th Street. Okay. That's a guess. Interesting. Uh, 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 Phil, do, 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 where are you here? Sorry. Uh, Caesar went away. Went way back with Ricardo. He's in the Last Supper photo. Yes, Caesar is in that. Uh, here's the one I was looking for. VL's corner is Ken Eto still alive? He is, no. You might want to think about. No, he died back in I think '04 is what, if my memory serves me. I just I remember when they announced it. it was all over TV. He lived in he lived in in witness protection. They changed his name, but he lived in a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia, and nobody ever found him. That was it. Uh, Phil Hadaway, why are there pics of a Cardo and company in the basement slash bathroom area of Harry Carey's Steakhouse? Was that a former mob joint? Mm, I don't know. I have no idea. I didn't even know that that was down there, Phil. I've never been remember. down there, so I don't know. Yeah, no, I, no idea. Uh uh, DJ V16457, it's common knowledge that the casino money came from the Teamsters Local 705, but I was wondering if you knew anybody or anything about Local 710. My family was in management there. Well, 710 was the over-the-road drivers, and, and basically, you know, that was the basic thing. And the guy who had, when I was around, the guy who had the biggest control over that was Jimmy Cozo. Jimmy Cozo had Wagon Master. He had all the the different, the 710 local. That was it. He was involved in it. Um, Nick Macy, the casino clip is about Alan Dorfman, not Campisi or Gattuso. Campisi and Gattuso were small times. Yeah, you're you're 100% accurate. It's about Dorfman. I threw it in there because I thought it was funny. I thought it'd make somebody smile. So that's why I put made it in there. Made me smile. <laughs> made me smile putting it together. So it doesn't smile much. He takes everything very serious. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. You know, this is a very serious subject. So, but I, I like to break it up with a little bit of, you know, because I don't know, maybe that's just what I'm good at doing. Uh, so, who knows? Uh, what type of music did the outfit guys listen to, Red? Oh, wow. When they were at home or when they were out? I I have no idea where that question would even start. Most, them, I would when, think... most of them, when they were at home, they listened to Italian music, operas, different things like that. Um, or they listened to Dean Martin or, you know, people like that, Sinatra, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But when they were out, it was kind of like they went with the flow of what, whatever the place was. If the DJ was pa- playing something like it faces... Whatever was popular, if it was disco, it was disco. If it was this, it was this. If it was that, it was that. It was like uh, Frank said about his place at Spanky's. It was a, it was a disco. Mm-hmm. But I people think, stop by in there and see him. I would think that everybody had listened to the music they liked because somebody's got to like different music than the next guy, right? They went to the places where they liked the atmosphere and the music. Man, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, Brett, I heard Eto's hangout was McDonald's. Is this true? They I'm had not... meetings there. They had meetings at McDonald's. The one, um, it was the um, McDonald's on Ohio. And um, it was the old one where, where they had uh, antique cars there and stuff like that. They used to actually meet in there. I think somebody else did too. Rocky and Felice did. There's uh-huh. somebody else. What are you laughing at? I'm not seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Phil Hadaway said Rat Pack oozes mafia. That's true. Yes, that's true. But what I was what I was laughing at or smiling about was Luminous Grin. Spilatro had the 007 theme song in the cassette player of his car. And he said, that is that is correct. Yes, that's right. He did have that in there. So I can hear I, Shirley Bassey singing it right now. <laughs> I'm just you Gold know, Finger. <laughs> Yeah, I just, yeah, just, anyway, uh, I think everybody listens to their own music, so. Uh, A couple of more comments from you guys out there. By the way, if you're coming in, hit that uh, like button, smash the like button. Uh, The last video that that we did was, uh, took off 
like a like a bat out of hell and uh really got some uh some some traction it's because of you guys thank you for sharing the somebody video told me adam it. on their on their androids they don't mm -hmm. know how to push the like button or the subscribe button okay so if you're if you're on your um if you're on your android and you're watching this what you have to do while you're watching it is swipe up if you swipe up while you see the screen it will uh it, it, it'll show you the place where you can hit the like button and all that and the subscribe button and, and whatnot. And the so, notification button. The bell. Yeah, it's a bell. Exactly. You can hit the, the notifications. So I'll give you guys a quick example here. Watch. Um, huh? That's not going to work because that's us. Here, let me put on this. What am I? Yeah. Well, let me, let me just move here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see this. Uh, skip. Boom. Okay, here's. Okay, so here's a video playing. Okay, and you just swipe up, and then you see it gives you all these options. And in these options down here, you can click that like button, or you can click the save button, or you can click the subscribe button. So they're all right there on the phone. That's how you do it on an Android. So and the bells are too for notification. Gotcha. And. Uh, <clears throat> uh bob dog johnny russo introduced me to red's channel is that a fact well, he did one bob good dog. thing in his life he did one good thing thank you <laughs> i appreciate it. chad weismer any info on the first ward and pat marcy pat marcy was at alderman right yes or over yeah he controlled he was kind of partners with alec Reddy, jimmy mm -hmm. alec Reddy, going way back this is right at, right after capone left you know, the committee was in charge, and I believe. But uh, uh, Pat Marcy was the fixer. He, he not only got in politics, but he fixed things. And uh, he just, they controlled City Hall. They controlled mm -hmm. Mayor Daly. I knew his nephew. Yeah? Yeah, he worked at, uh, all the family works for the city, right? So his, his, uh, his nephew, Roger Marcy, worked at the uh, building inspectional department, and he was a supervisor there. So they would send people out to, you know, give you tickets or whatever for not living up to building code. Mm -hmm. But when I built one of my buildings, when I went up there, I had the plans and everything. He just went, he didn't even look at the engineer report. Brett says that, sorry, Brett says that he appointed judges, Pat Marcy. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. That's what, uh, uh, what's his name? The um, uh, Cooley. Cooley said that all they did was make all the vacancies by arresting all these judges during Greylord. All mm -hmm. they did was make vacancies for new ones to go in. Wow. That's uh, yeah. it's politicians, right? That's what it is. Always has been, always will be. Uh, what did you know about Vincent the Saint in Ciro? Read anything? No, he was basically a thief, mm -hmm. and I never got involved with that part of it. Uh, I never, I saw him over at Grandin Ogden once or twice, but uh, I really didn't know him. Uh, James Wyke, Wykesass, Wykesass, I think. Uh, were you ever in the car wash business? Never. Okay. Pretty interesting question. I figured I'd uh, I'd uh, ask it. Sean Parker, Johnny Russo beat up Chuck Norris. I bet yeah. he did. <laughs> Dave Fox, Pat Marcy Jr., the son of Pascal, is a chef in Las Vegas now. Hmm. That's a fact. Okay. Oh, well, very cool. So. Uh, Anyhow, you guys are uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, do you guys have any questions at all that you want to ask about uh, anything Rush Streets? I could pop that back up. There was a few more photos that we didn't kind of show that I had pulled in uh, the other day. There's a there's a cop giving somebody a ticket at Mr. Kelly's and uh, Mama's Pancake House. So, and there the Pussy Cat something was right next. Oh to yeah. Us. That was the Pussycat. That was a really, it's by Tony Seller right there. Yeah, they were Tony all in a row. <laughs> they had strippers in there. Hmm. But they were all dinner clubs, too. 
They were, huh? Supper oh, yeah. clubs? Yeah. That's a thing of the past. That's something that didn't happen during my lifetime. Supper clubs. No. Yeah. Missed out on that. So, anyway. Um, who owned the snuggery? Do you know? No, I don't. I really don't. Are there any remnants of mob bars left in Cicero? A few. Mm-hmm. A few. I think they're diehards. You know, they're, they're never going to clean out Cicero. Yeah. What's uh, what's Red's, uh, what's your take on uh, Michael Corbin? He was a dirty cop. <laughs> what can I tell you? He, he was out in uh, Willow Springs with uh, Doc mm-hmm. and the other guys way back in the early years of, uh, but he, he stayed there and uh, actually uh, he was involved in a murder. Uh, he was involved in a lot of murders, really, but nobody ever proved anything on him. Corbin was kind of a legend out there. He ran things with a, <clears throat> a steel arm. But he knew Ralph Capone. He goes back to knowing Ralph Capone, which was Al Capone's brother. Uh, yeah, there's that, that. that's pretty wild. I mean, that's going way back. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's going way back. Nick Macy. Uh, Chucky was a West Side guy all his life. Okay. Well, he was originally with Giancana, so I don't know who took over, you know, who took him. Uh, right. I, I would imagine Grandin Ogden took him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about, so I, I can't comment on that. But Gary Mushinsky, uh, see, I'm really good with the Polish names. I glad right <laughs> through him, man. Like Mushinsky right there. He never had a problem saying Pansko either. <laughs> no, nope, Pan- Penis Pansko. Easy, easy as can be. I wrote, I wrote out Krawcheck uh, for, and I asked Ali. I said, "Can you read that? You know, and pronounce it." Nope. See, I could do that because it's it's Polish. Don't anyway. feel bad at him. You know how many news guys on the news used to slaughter these names? Oh well, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, certainly, it's it's not something that uh, you know. I watched Tony's name get slaughtered every time on the news. Yeah. Who owned the black room on back room on Rush? I was never there, and I don't know. Okay. There were a lot of places on Rush, man. <laughs> Some of those were only like uh, 800 square feet, small places. Yeah. Mad Attack said, uh, "Is there an Italian group that it was an Italian group that ran around on Harlem? Uh, they claim to have mob ties. Is that true?" Yes. Okay. That was part of the Elmwood Park crew. Hmm. John John Apollo Apollo, tell us about Gus Alex. There's not not, not much to say about Gus, except he was very strong. Um, Mm -hmm. He was a well-thought-of man with Mm Cerrone and some other people. The biggest thing that I know about him was that uh, when uh, uh, Sam Giancana got rid of his place, the Villa Venice, Mm -hmm. that's where Gussie Alex put up his office out there. So I drove out there one time with somebody, and I was very surprised because I knew where I was going, but I didn't know the villain in Venice was gone. But somehow these properties get, they all get turned over. They stay in the, in the mob. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't, they don't get rid of them. Like the Admiral Theater. They didn't get rid of that either. It just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, that's still, uh, and that's still going. uh uh-huh. Yeah, still going. Uh, somebody asked, yeah, Gary Mashinsky, when is the next You Must Meet? I glazed over that. Sorry, Gary. Uh, you Must Meet is a, other, it's a, it's a channel that I'm building, and it's, it's kind of random interviews of different people uh, of, have interesting life stories. And uh, I'll put a card if you guys want to check it out. I'll put a card up there in the corner so you guys can see. Uh, you guys can see that. Uh, There's some good stuff on that. I, I, I'm going to put Red on. I'm going to do an interview, not mainly about the mob with him, but other things to put on it. It's just an yeah, interesting person channel, I guess you could say. So there'll be one coming up soon uh, there, Gary. And uh, Carl Foster, take it slow on Rush Street. Yes. Take No, no, get it? Take it slow yes. on yes. Rush 
Street because you're yes, not your, your, your sense of humor, man. Take it slow on Rush Street, <laughs> but everybody was slow. They were all drinking. I, I never, I'll never forget people that like Jay McMullen and other people I knew. They were yeah. walking along with drinks in their hands. They went out of the place, and the cops used to stop and say, "Pour it out," you know. Yeah, I, 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 uh, uh, Brett, you asked what's uh, Pansco's first name. You talking about Peanuts Pansco? Paul Peanuts Pansco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. His first name was really Paul, but they called him Peanuts Pansco. I called him yeah. Paulie. Right. So, I mean, that's what Frank told me. Frank told me his name was Peanuts Pansco. So, that's what they all called him. Uh, a- a- anyway, I always thought that when, when Frank said it, it sounded like he was saying penis instead of Peanuts. They Pansco. called him Peanuts because they made fun of him how big he was. He was a very large man. It's going to be shaped like this? Like no. Peanuts? No, <laughs> no. It was cause, it was because they kind of thought of him as an elephant. That's where he got that nickname, peanuts. Okay. You know, in the old days, they used to throw peanuts to the elephants at the, at the uh, zoo. Yes, yes. No, I I totally get it. Uh, Nick Macy, I take these shows very seriously. Seriously. Uh, I know my, you do, Nick. My relatives and friends are discussed constantly. You would too if your family and friends were discussed. LOL. Totally with you, man. And I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. Let me make that very clear. But um, I don't know. I like to smile. What the hell can I say? You know. So how? You know. Yes, wake the laugh, wake, wake the fuck laugh. up. Wake the fuck up. Have some fun. Get a cup of joy in your life. Mm. No, I want everything to be very authentic, and 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 I want to put accurate information out there, Nick, because I want to. I, you know, I started with this with Frank saying this should be documented. This should all these stories should be documented. And everybody has a little bit of knowledge of something in their head, whether it's Red, whether it's uh, Frank, whether it's uh, Elaine Smith, or maybe it's Gary Jenkins, who was a police officer or a this or, a, you know, but there's a lot of information. And and if it's not if it's not recorded, um you know, and, and accurately, by the way, then, you know, it gets, it gets lost. There was so. a guy that talked to me last night and he used to be in 13, 13th district. And he, uh, interesting guy, but he also got in trouble and, uh, he, he got some silencers he was arrested for, but you know, he was, uh, he worked in the intelligence unit with captain Duffy. And we were talking about the patrol that was called off. Because he was on that detail on, on Giancana. And he had some very interesting things to say. We knew a lot of people. We both did. Uh, <clears throat> Tim Foster, Loving Las Vegas. Wake the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> See that? <laughs> you could get one of these cups, too, if you want. It's got Frank's drawing on one side of wake it. And it's the wake fuck the up. fuck up. It's in the... The little mm-hmm. merchandise down there, if you want. Everybody from uh, Chicago's does, dees, dats, does, dows. This, that, the other thing over there, uh, <laughs> up there, down there, everything, everything. They even say ting sometimes. Ting. Everything. Tree, <laughs> 12, 12, huh? <laughs> Chester drawers. What the <laughs> fuck is a Chester drawer? My, my Chester drawers. <laughs> Seriously. The French room. Only in Chicago is there a French room. French, F R U N C H. French room, right? right? Everybody's got a French room, and everybody's got plastic on the furniture in the French room. That's the Italian families. <laughs> That's how it goes. All right, Red. Did you ever uh, go to the Roman house, Joe Nagal's place? No, I did not. Never did. Okay. Um, and you know anything about Panama City, Red? Panama City. Yeah. Here? Yeah. What do you want to know about it? So can you comment on Panama City? Panama City? Panama City Beach? What do you want to know? I don't know. You said comment on it. Maybe you could say something. Panama City. Well, they got somebody place. here that runs things. I, I don't know. He's a half-assed connected guy. I don't know who he's connected through. But uh, okay. they take care of certain things here, like the gambling mm-hmm. and the pornography. Right. Well, has to be controlled by someone, somewhere, somehow. So, uh, with all that said, John Apollo, Apollo, do you know who killed the Greek school teacher 
from Budlong School at St. Demetrius Church. No, I don't. I read, I just read a stat um, in Elaine Smith's book. There was something like 1,100 unsolved mob hits between like 1965 and 85 or something like this. Crazy. I mean, that's like, like nowadays, 1,100 is about what, that's about what, how many people get shot each weekend in Chicago, I think, nowadays. So, yeah. I mean, no, I'm serious. Like, it, yeah, it, but it, there was a lot of things they just could never solve. They solve a lot of these homicides in Chicago now. The problem is they're just street gang members. In the old days, it was like they didn't solve them. They went unsolved. And a lot of times the cops used to turn around and say, it was a mob hit, and they just let it go. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I hear, and and a lot of the cops were on the take anyway, and just it just went away. Not all cops. I'm not saying every one of them. Just saying no. there were some that you know you're gonna you're gonna have bad everywhere you go. So you have a good cooks and you have bad cooks. You're gonna yeah, have but if they didn't turn their head, if cooks. they didn't turn their heads to some things, and not only that, the money was there. I mm -hmm. mean, somebody was always showing up the money. If you didn't if you didn't turn your head to it, that was you know, like yeah. not worth it. Well. How it goes. Um, so, did you ever go to the back room while it was open? I think I asked you that earlier, and you said no. no. So, yeah, no. Sorry about that, guys. Red wasn't at the uh, back room when it was open or closed, for that matter. Uh, anyway, so, quickly, a couple of things before we wrap it up for today. Because, yeah, we're going, uh, we're going right about time and... Uh, it's been awesome, guys, uh, today. I want you to be sure to check out Red's channel. Uh, go go over there and subscribe to him. And make sure, uh, if you're coming here to this channel and you're new, click the uh, like button, hit the uh, prescribe button. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's all in, man. It's all good. You'll be notified when we do another show. We're going to be doing one next Redness Day, which will be uh, seven days from now. So on the 14th of april we'll be doing another one you guys uh we don't know what they're gonna it's gonna be about just yet uh if you're watching this video and it's not live leave it in the comments what do you want to hear about suggestions say so you want to hear about something make a couple suggestions i'll put a poll up in the community page and you guys can vote on what we'll do how's that sound and you can give us two or three suggestions and we'll do it scott hc you next week luminous grin coming to vegas this weekend hey man uh let me know um Alexander Bell's first call. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Anyway, I'm not making fun of Gianni Russo anymore today because I, I, I was going to play a little clip of him, and then I thought about it and went, you know, I'm not going to give him any airtime. Why? Why should he I? Because it's you deserve know? it. <laughs> just, it yeah, it's going to make me mad anyways. So, uh, quickly, was Jack Serona drunk? Some people said he was. I didn't, I didn't know him that well. Um I knew he had, I heard people say he had a drinking problem at one time, but I don't think he would have been that close to Ocardo if he was a drunk. Okay. I mean, a real drunk. He couldn't handle himself, you know? Yeah, that's no, uh, that's no good. Dazzling. That's like, that's like asking, is, was Tony a drunk? No, he wasn't a drunk, but he liked to drink. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, Nothing wrong with moderation. Gasling Urbanite. There he goes again. Blazing Sam. Yeah. <laughs> $10. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dazzling Urbanite. It's very, very nice of you. And uh, Chad Weismer, uh, thanks again for uh, for your donation. Appreciate it. Uh, Calzone83 said going. that... Uh, Push that like button. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button, guys. Smash the like button, okay? And uh, yeah, I uh, do hope that you guys... Please do, Luminous Grin, give... Uh, Give me a call, and uh, yeah, exactly, he is. Kevin Yo, um, hi, Anna. Maybe it's Adam. Maybe it was. I'm not Anna. At least not not tonight. I'm not Anna. So, <laughs> okay, Fred. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. All right, well, anyway, hey, guys, it was awesome. Thanks for hanging out. I uh, had a great time. Red, thank you again. You're welcome. Really appreciate you being here. We'll see you all next week, Redna's Day on the 14th.